we are going to discuss the tuning fork test and under tuning fork test we are going to discuss the first experiment that is the Rinne test. What is this Rinne test? Rinne test is a hearing loss test or it is primarily evaluates the hearing loss in one ear by actually comparing between the air and bone conduction. Okay, so in this test, we are going to use the instrument that is C128 Hertz tuning fork. Okay, by the use of the uh, tuning fork, we are going to compare the time taken for air and bone conduction. And by comparing, we are going to conclude that what kind of hearing loss is associated with one ear. That what provides this Rene test. For this Rene test, we are going to have the procedure that first we are going to strike the fork. Okay. So if you are going to imagine or if you are going to assume this as the tuning fork with uh, its end tube and we are going to hold it in this manner and first we are going to strike the fork. When we are going to strike the fork, then the two wings of the fork is going to vibrate and due to the vibration of the uh, wings of the fork, then it will be generating the sound waves with a frequency of 128 Hz. And uh, when the vibration will take place, then we are going to place the vibrating fork on the base of mastoid process. So this is the first procedure in which we are going to check the bone conduction by placing that vibrating tuning fork over the mastoid process. And then we are going to ask the patient to tell that till how much time the patient is going to hear the sound when the vibrating fork will be placed over the mastoid process. Here in the structure you can see that this is the external pinna and behind the external pinna here this structure represents the mastoid process and the mastoid process is attached with the temporal bone that consists the whole ear. So when we are going to place the tuning fork over this uh, mastoid process, the, obviously the tuning fork will be vibrating and due to the process of vibration, the energy will be transmitted and the vibrating energy will also be conducted through the bone from starting from the mastoid process. So through this first procedure, we are going to calculate the bone conduction. Due to the vibration inside the bone, it is going to vibrate the ear ossicles that are present in the middle ear cavity and due to the vibration of the middle ear, ear ossicles they are going to produce or generate the accent potential by beating over this over window and further the sound is generated. So this is how the bone conduction helps us to perceive the sound. So we are going to check the time interval that till how much the patient will be able to hear those sound if the vibrating tuning fork will be kept on the base of the mastoid process. So it is the first procedure. Then next immediately we are going to move the tuning fork to auditory meters. First we place over the mastoid process and when the patient will say that I am not able to hear the sound anymore then we are going to uh, change the place of this vibrating tuning fork to the external acoustic meters okay near the pinna. So the remaining vibrations that are present in the tuning fork is going to produce or generate the vibration in the air and that will travel through this external acoustic meters or external auditory canal and similarly it is going to produce a vibration in the tympanic membrane and further there will be generation of sound wave due to the movement of the uh, ear ossicles and in the cochlear nerves. So this is the normal air conduction. <clears throat> Here it is said that after the process when the patient will say that I am not able to hear the sound we have to move immediately we have to move immediately the remaining vibrating tuning fork to the auditory meters and through this we are going to check the air conduction or till how much time the person is able to hear if the vibrating tuning fork is present uh, exactly near the external acoustic meters. Similarly, the patient will be asked to tell when the sound is no longer heard as it was like in previous case, 
we are going to calculate the time and we are going to note the time interval so mostly we know that the according to <clears throat> normal physiology the air conduction is much more longer or two times longer than bone conduction what does that means that if in first procedure the time for uh, which or the time period uh, the patient will be hearing the sound through this bone conduction will be around 21 to 22 second and the time period for which the patient will be hearing the sound through the air conduction when the vibrating tuning fork will be placed exactly near the external acoustic meatus it is 44 to 45 second it means that these are the durations starting from 0 second from which this process has already started from striking the tuning fork and in the first 21 to 22 second we are going to hear the sound through bone conduction and in next 20 second or in next 20 second that will be calculated as next 44th second till that much time we are going to hear the sound if the vibrating tuning fork will be kept near the external acoustic meters. So from this we can conclude that this air conduction is exactly twice as the bone conduction. So the result says that if air conduction is twice as long as bone conduction, it means 2 is to 1 ratio. This is air is to bone conduction ratio. Okay, so if the bone is to sorry air is to bone conduction ratio is twice and that means the air conduction sound heard for a long period of time and it means that the sound persists for a long period of time in air then we are going to conclude it as the patient is having normal hearing okay and that would be represented as positive sign in the audiogram passport what is the audiogram passport uh, during different examination of ear we are going to have a list in which we are going to write the name of experiment and we are going to write the result of experiment okay whether it is positive negative or positive reduced like in this case of Rene test okay and there are some group of tests for con that are conducted to examine uh, different kinds of disability related with the ear so this informative passport is known as audiogram passport so in that we are going to write for normal hearing as positive. Next, if the bone conduction sound is heard longer than equally as long as air conduction, then what does that mean? If this bone conduction will persist for a long period of time and the time will be exactly equal or longer than the air conduction. For air conduction time was 44 second. If the bone conduction will exceed from that 44 second or it will be equal to 44 second then we can say that the bone conduction are equal to the air conduction or greater than air conduction and this means that there is some kind of problem in the middle ear. Why middle ear? Because there is a hypothesis that if the bone conduction will be greater then it means the more vibrations are present in the bone and more vibration will be induced in the middle ear cavity that leads to vibration, continuous vibration or long persisting vibration of ear ossicles in the middle ear cavity and that produces the sound waves. Okay, so that is the hypothesis from which we are going to say that there is some kind of problem in the middle ear cavity and as we know if there will be some kind of problem in the middle ear cavity then we are going to conclude that the patient will be having conductive hearing loss okay this is the middle ear and if problem then cd cd means conductive deafness and this conductive hearing loss deafness is represented in negative sign in the audiogram passport Next, if the air conduction sound is heard longer than bone conduction, it says that air conduction will be longer than bone conduction. That is actually the truth. Here we said that the air conduction is twice the bone conduction. But in this case, what happened? The air conduction will be less than 2 is to 1 ratio. Here the uh, time for air conduction was 44 to 45 seconds. But in this pathology condition, 
where the patient will be having sensory neural hearing loss or deafness and that is related with the inner ear problem it means that the air conduction will be around 35 to 39 second and it also satisfies the sentence the air conduction sound is heard longer than bone conduction this 35 is greater than 22 second but it is less than 2 is to 1 ratio this 35 is not equivalent in 2 is to 1 ratio according to this bone conduction so that what says the sensory neural hearing loss deafness that it is positive like air conduction is greater than bone conduction but it is reduced okay so this is the limitation of renal test that we cannot properly or exactly say the nature of sensory neural deafness but we can able to detect the presence of conductive deafness so this is the limitation that you should remember about the renal test to avoid this limitation the renal test is always accompanied with weber test okay so next we are going to read about this weber test that is always accompanied with this renal test so next under tuning fork test we are going to discuss about the weber test what is this weber test it is a screening test for hearing and it can detect the unilateral or one-sided conductive deafness or sensory neural deafness okay so it determines the deafness of one ear only that is unilateral or one-sided ear only it is a comparison of perception symmetry of tuning fork through the bone from the sagittal pin okay so this experiment or this test only includes the bone conduction and it says that where the sound is maximally present from the main axis that is the sagittal plane whether the may the more sound is heard from the right side or from the left side so what is the instrument that is required in this process the same c128 tuning fork and what is the preparation before this test we need the verbal consent from the uh, patient and we should give the clear instruction related to the experiment uh, to the patient Next, what is the procedure for performing this Weber test? As we know, this Rinne test is associated with the Weber test. Rinne test, from the Rinne test, we learned that we could analyze the time duration of air and bone conduction by placing at different location, first at mastoid process and then near the external acoustic meatus. But in this Weber test, we are going to locate that at which side the patient is going to hear maximum sound. So the procedure starts like first we are going to strike the fog for uh, initiating the vibration in the wings of the fog and then we are going to place the vibrating tuning fog on the vertex. Okay, what is that vertex? It is the mid sagittal plane. Okay, so if you are going to see that this is the mid sagittal plane just assume that this is the skull and these are the ears this is the left ear and right ear and this is the mid sagittal plane so we are going to place the vibrating tuning fork at this vertex or mid sagittal plane and what is the location it can be forehead and breeze of nose okay right here breeze of nose or it can be forehead because the vertex line is present at the midline and it is equidistant from both the ears. When we are going to place the vibrating tuning fork then the vibration will be spreading through the bone and through this bone conduction we can hear the sound and that we are going to examine that at which ear side how much is the sound we are going to perceive in both the ears. So the next procedure says that after striking the fork and placing over the vertex, we are going to ask the patient whether it is heard loudest in either of the side of ear or it is present at the midline of the ear. It means that like where it is louder, whether it is louder at right ear or left ear. 
so according to the result of the patient we are going to say that which kind of sensory loss or which kind of conductive loss is present in the ear what is the interpretation of the weber test it helps in interpretation that if there will be normal hearing of the patient then there will be no lateralization of the sound this process of transfer of wave through the bone conduction means lateralization no lateralization means both the side at equally the sound wave is going to be produced and reach and perceived by both the ears so this is equal so no lateralization the sound should be heard in the midline and equally on both sides but in case of unilateral sensory neural deafness what do you mean by sensory neural deafness it is related with the inner ear okay so if there will be any kind of defect in the inner ear then we are going to see the sensory neural deafness and as the weber test helps to detect only unilateral side or unilateral ear affected side so unilateral sensory neural deafness will show the lateralization in the, into the healthy side what do you mean by this this is the second case this was the normal case in which the patient was hearing sound equally in both the sides of ear but in this case there will be lateralization in the, into the healthy side first the sensory neural deafness so we are going to take the left ear sensory neural deafness so this part is unhealthy so the left ear is unhealthy whereas the right ear is healthy when we are going to place the vibrating tuning fork at the vertex then the sound wave is going to be heard more at the right side so this means there will be lateralization to the right ear as there is problem lying with the inner ear of left ear there will be lateralization to the right ear so this analysis says here that if there will be unilateral sensory neural deafness of one side that means left side there will be lateralization into the healthy side that is right side okay and unilateral sensory neural deafness means it is related with inner ear okay so inner ear deafness will be present in the patient similarly if there will be unilateral conductive deafness there will be lateralization into the into the affected side here it was in healthy side but here it is in affected side so the middle ear related deafness in this case what will happen if we are going to consider the conductive deafness conductive deafness means middle ear will be affected okay so the middle ear is affected in this case so what will happen when we are going to place the vibrating tuning fork then more sound will be heard at this affected ear side so the lateralization here we can see it it shifts to the left ear or that is the left ear is affected ear okay so these are the conclusions that you should remember about the weber test in each cases in normal hearing unilateral sensory neural deafness and unilateral conductive deafness now as i have said that the weber test is accompanied with the rinne test then what were the result of rinne test for normal hearing it was positive for conductive deafness it was negative and for sensory neural deafness it was positive and reduced okay and in weber test what is the uh, result for normal hearing there will be no lateralization in conductive deafness means unilateral conductive deafness there will be lateralization into the affected side so the sound is going to shift to the affected side more sound will be heard at the affected side that in that was in case of number 3 but uh, in sensory neural deafness that is positive but reduced that was similar like the air conduction but we couldn't able to find out where the actual problem lies so in case of sensory neural deafness the weber test interpretation says that the lateralization will be to the healthy side okay here the lateralization will be to the healthy side that means the healthy side ear is going to uh, 
hear the more sound or more volume of sound if the vibrating tuning fork is going to be placed at the vertex it means the lateralization into the healthy side relates with the sensory neural deafness okay so these are the conclusions of both rimnet test and the weber test then next we are going to discuss the swaber test that comes under the third unit tuning fork test so this is a test that helps in comparing the bone conduction of patient and examiner okay here the patient will be having some kind of uh, deafness or there will be some kind of uh, sensory or conductive hearing loss but the examiner here taken as a normal subject that do not have any kind of deficiency or do not have any kind of deafness okay neither the conductive or the sensory neural deafness so we are going to compare the bone conduction between the patient and examiner so this swaber test includes the same instrument that is c128 tuning fork and what is the procedure first we are going to set the vibration in the tuning fork and then we are going to place the tuning fork alternately okay here we are going to place the tuning fork alternately against the mastered process first of the patient and second of the examiner okay as we are going to compare the bone conduction and bone conductions uh, for checking the bone conduction we have to place the vibrating tuning fork at the mastered process so first we are going to place the tuning fork uh, at the mastered process of the patient and then after the examiner why because we need to check whether the tone is heard or not if the patient will say after some time or after placing the tuning fork uh, onto the mastered process if the patient will say that i am not able to hear the sound and then the doctor or the examiner needs to check that vibration that whether there is present or whether there is any kind of vibration present in the tuning fork or not so that should be checked each time during the first bone conduction check when the patient stops hearing the sound then the examiner should check his own and note the number of seconds okay so this is the actual result taken of the patient that how much time difference uh, is present if there is present of any kind of deficiency or any kind of deafness in the ear of the patient so we are going to calculate the number of seconds lagging behind or number of seconds leading uh, from the normal subject that is examiner's ear so what is the interpretation of the swaber test if the patient will be having normal hearing then there will be not certain and not lengthen of the bone conduction between the patient and examiner it means that the time for bone conduction that is 21 to 22 second will be equal or will be same in both patient and examiner if there will be sensory neural deafness of patient then certain bone conduction will be found in the patient it means when we are going to place the vibrating tuning fork in the uh, patient's mastered process first then the patient will say that he is not able to hear anything but when the uh, same tuning fork will be placed over the examiner's master process then the examiner says that still there is some presence of vibration in the tuning fork okay so that is what represented as shortened bone conduction of the patient if there will be conductive deafness of the patient and conductive deafness means it relates with the middle ear cavity then we are going to see the lengthen bone condition low the uh, time duration of bone conduction will be higher in the patient as compared to the examiner okay so these are the interpretation interpretation or these are the results that we are going to remember for swaber test okay now let's find out what type of uh, hearing loss is present in this auditory passport of a patient okay so these are the uh, informations that are provided in the auditory passport and it includes the speech test rinet test weber test and swaber test 
and uh, tinnitus is a uh, sign of inflammation uh, these are going to be found in the auditory passport in this auditory passport of the patient we have already done this test and we have this results and from these results we are going to calculate or uh, we are going to predict that what kind of hearing loss is present in this patient first of all if there will be tinnitus or the signs of inflammation of the ear then in left ear it is present in right ear it is absent okay negative signs represents absent and positive sign represents it is present whisper speech or in case of speech test we have two format that is one is whisper speech format and the ordinary speech format in whisper speech for right ear is greater than 5 meter whereas for left ear it is 1 meter and for casual speech or ordinary speech for right ear it is greater than 20 meter and for left ear it is 3 meter normally the findings of whisper speech is greater than 5 meter but here in case of left ear it is 1 meter okay so here we see some kind of problem is there in left ear for hearing the whisper speech or low frequency format for ordinary or casual speech normal is greater than 20 or 20 but in left ear we find it is 3 meter so obviously from these three results we find that there is some problem in the left ear or there there may be present of some kind of uh, hearing loss to prove that we also need to check this three test so what does this three test says rene test for right ear says it is positive and positive value of rene test means it is normal rene test for left ear says it is negative negative of rene test means there is conductive deafness okay or conductive hearing loss of the left ear here we found that it is conductive deafness next in weber test there is lateralization to the right side okay here there is no lateralization but here it is lateralization to the affected ear side from these three figures we found that the ear is affected and here the weber test result says that the lateralization is towards the affected side so what does that means the weber test towards the affected side result shows the conductive deafness of the left ear okay next in swaba test uh, the result of right ear says it is not lengthened or not shortened from the bone conduction with respect to examiner okay but for left ear it is lengthened with respect to examiner it means the more sound persist or more bone conduction is found in the patient than the examiner so these are the three results that depicts that the patient is having the conductive deafness or conductive hearing loss okay so this is how we are going to see the auditory passport we are going to analyze the results of the auditory passport